Hello, YouTube friends. A little quick kind of demo-ish video this morning. Oh, it's it's morning. It's I just woke up. I've had like four sips of coffee. MB7 Mixer is a mixer that I want more people to know about. It is from Blue Cat, and what it can do is, is insert effects at different bands. So it opens up just like this with four bands, but you can increase the number of bands to seven. I think they have a five band version. I might not even have the latest version. I just wanted to make a super quick reminder to people that it's out there because I saw that it was on sale somewhere. And so every time it goes on sale, um, I, you know, I want people to know about these kind of cool things. So this one does involve buying a little bit of gear and um, it's it's mostly going to be the, the, the thing that I wanted to show it for was my sound design friends because they're always asking for tips and tricks on how to do things with sound design. So what you can do is you can assign a VST or an AU. And the reason I'm doing this in Pro Tools is because this also doubles as a VST or AU host within um, the, the AAX plugin format that Pro Tools uses. So you can put different plugins in each band. So what I uh, wanted to do, uh, I didn't think through a demo because I do these videos so fast. I just grabbed um, a piano loop from Noise uh, Noise is one of my favorite sample providers, N-O-I-I-Z dot com. And um, it's going to sound something like this. I just picked something with like pure tones so that we could distort them on different bands. Oh, I can't hear it. Can you hear it? Crap. Oh, I have to re redo Pro Tools. So while I do this, playback engine, blah, 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 change the playback engine to what I'm using. And are you sure you want to do that? Yes, I'm sure I want to do that. I've had a lot of music placed on MTV Challenge. And uh, I'll be doing a video on that at some point where I can show you what um, what I've done to get music on TV because I feel like a lot of people have questions about how to do that. They've asked me a lot of questions. Uh, okay, so now we're back and here's the sample. So nice and pure. Oh, that's a little low. And um, a lot of pure tones. It's a sound that we all recognize that if we distort it or mangle it in different bands, um, and that's it. That was the whole loop. And let's record that so that I can play it. Yeah. So now I can trigger it with a MIDI key. Now let's go back to MB7 and load one of these plugins up. So I'll pick this band. It's got some built-in stuff. So you don't even need to buy other effects. It's got echoes, multi-tap delays, reverbs, compressors, duckers, gates, comb filters. Actually, I, I, R is interesting. So I, R loader and an I, R loader. Wow. I, I updated this and I haven't played with it much. So you can even load impulse responses into, um, one band and do a convolution with a rhythmic impulse response on one band. Let's see if I can do that. I'm going to try, I'm going to go out on a limb. How do I load at the I, R? Oh, you've got skins that you can use. So um, if you don't like the blue color, you can change the colors. I love doing these demos when I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, that's, it's rescalable. So it's got a rescalable uh, interface. Tone, slope, you can automate all these things. So every control is gonna be automatable. Uh, this mode, it says no controls mapped. So you go to this, all these little dials and uh, yeah, you can Oh, and you, then you can also, um, these are the pre-fader plugins that you can insert, and then these are the post-fader plugins you can insert. So you can, ha you have four rows of plugins. Spectagram. Ooh. Oh my goodness. This can do stuff I didn't even know. Manage reference curves. Manage impulse responses. Load IR. There it was. So let's load another sample. Yeah, let's load this one. Load IR. Yeah. Well, it would just be this band. So let's make this band bigger. Let's pretend that it's one big band. Oh yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. 
So um, one of the things that I wanted to mention, though, and this is that was just using an in a built-in plugin. One of the things that I wanted to mention is I found that the phase was uh, getting disrupted if I had plugins that took um, several milliseconds of delay of, of inbuilt delay so that you can take one of your bands and really tease it apart from your other bands if you've got too much delay. The workaround for me for that was instantiate the same plugin at all bands so that the delay is consistent across all bands and then the phase comes back in. So if you're not doing crazy sound design and that's not appealing to you and you need to use like all these plugin bands, usually I'm just doing a couple different plugins. I mean, this this is kind of an overkill type of plugin where it can do so many things. So I would, uh, you know, just to be super clear about that, I would, if I'm loading in a VST3, like character, let's do character. And I want that on this band. And I found that for some reason, um, So there you can hear a little kind of fuzzy distortion at the top. If for some reason I, f I heard that um, teasing apart from the other bands and introducing phase issues, I would instantiate Noveltech character, Noveltech, Noveltech, Noveltech character at each uh, of the same positions with it basically not doing anything so that all the phase uh, all the bands were in phase what are some other things you can do here b m s so obviously mute solo bypass so you could bypass mute and solo um you can sp just take out the stereo spread so here's the stereo spread all you can pan a band So it's visualizing the panning up there, which is cool. Uh, you can change the slope of the crossover and the, you can dial in the frequency of the crossover. You could even automate these so that you sweep through <laughs> an effect processing on one of the bands. Again, you can go up to seven bands, um, <laughs> which is awesome. Let's pick some, let's throw some different um, VSTs in here. Um, really, I just wanted to show you that the, the plugin does things. FGX Byte. I think that's a new one from Native Instruments that I haven't really played with yet. Let's see what this does. Um, well, what, ba what band am I on? Probably something that I've... I love that that IR is still playing back there. So I've got a an IR. I just kind of a what's ending up sounding like a distortion. Now, which band is this? It's two. So let's bring band two a little bigger here. Crunch. So let's do that between um, it's interesting because you're introducing upper harmonics that are far beyond the band itself into the full signal, even though they're, the effect is being processed on, the, on just this band. So in this B2, I'm introducing things that are probably sounding further up here. Let's see if we can visualize things here. What do all these things do? Spectrum. If we were to solo this band and then unmix it. So this is the band that I'm processing with no processing. <laughs> this is just the band passing through the effect unmixed. As I mix in the effect, I'm introducing frequencies that are far beyond the band. It's kind of cool. So all of these things are things that you can explore and play with. Let's change what I've got in three. Or, heck, let's turn it up. That's the IR. That's that drum beat in there. <laughs> I 
<laughs> that's kind of cool. It's still playing. That beat is still playing back there. I've let go of the key. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's bypass just that plug-in on that band and load something else. Let's load... Um, you know, usually I think of distorting a particular band, but see, let's see how creative I can get. You know, what about um, a gate? So let's take this band and gate part of it. Sorry. So that's a basic idea. I love this gate. I should do a whole thing on this gate. Um, I'm distorting the top. I'm running through. I was running through an IR. Now I'm running through a gate. I've got some bite that's introducing harmonics above. I mean, the options are you basically open up your entire plugin arsenal to every band of your frequency spectrum for your source. So. Uh, please share this video if you find one, even one person that you think. I mean, don't you don't need to spam the whole world. I would wouldn't mind growing one subscriber at a time if they find these things interesting. Um, I am doing a little bit more of these, but I just I need to end right now because I've got other stuff to do. Uh, we're all busy. Subscribe if you want. I've got a few other videos about things, but I'll be making some more when I can. And um, uh, yeah, have a great day.